Um, now we would like to proceed with Jasper, who is going to present a topic. Uh, he's going to talk about our generation, the millennials. My generation, Mr. 1996. <laughs> oh, kind of. <laughs> Two years ago, I started my first full-time job uh, as a consultant. And I was receiving acceptable pay. I had fun most of the time. I received positive feedback by clients, supervisors, colleagues. And yet, for some reason, from an overall perspective, I was not happy. Through some coincidence, after a year, I would have an intern. And that intern had always wanted to become consultant. He was passionate and he, would, he was outperforming his peers. So when it came to our first feedback conversation, I would ask him, so what do you think? How do you like it to be a consultant? And what do you think about your performance? And he said, I think I'm going to quit. And I said, why? And he said, I think I'm not making the impact I should make. And I said, you've been here for a month. So for me, that was the time when I, for the first time, asked myself, um, is it a coincidence that two millennials are basically happy with their day-to-day -day life, but not happy and fulfilled from an overall perspective? So, and that was the time when I decided to come to KLU, and through some indirect guidance of the courses in the first semester, I was led to an answer. And apparently it is that we millennials are accused of being unfocused, self-interested, narcissistic, hard to manage, and entitled, the last two ones, hard to manage and entitled, are the important ones. And that's another surprise for me, because I thought we should be the generation that is healthy, uh, well-educated, just as the previous generations, or even better educated, and definitely as digital natives, uh, we should be the generation who knows how to, how to apply all this technology, right? Well, apparently, that's not the case. And as leaders ask us, um, as we confound leadership so much, they ask us, what do you want? And we say, we want a purpose in life, love that. We want to make an impact, whatever that means. We want free food and the PlayStation. <laughs> well, somebody articulates some purpose, uh, there's free food and the PlayStation, and yet we are still not happy. So, and why is that? We can break that down into four pieces. And the first one will be parenting, that's what we are going to start off with. Um, then the second one is technology, the main topic of today. The third one, uh, we'll, and the fourth one, we'll, we'll only scratch the surface of its impatience. And the fourth one is environment. So let's start off with parenting. Um, apparently, the generation that we call millennials, born 1980 to 2000 approximately, too many of us grew up being told that they are special and that they can have anything they want in life just because they want it anything. Some of them got better grades because their parents complained and others perceived, uh, received medals for coming in last. We give out these participation medals despite clear research that it devalues the reward for those who actually work hard and then depending on the age of the participant who comes in last it either makes them feel embarrassed, hence it makes them feel worse, or it is be being seen as the wrong form of praise as they think they receive the medal for who they are and not what they do, not for their behavior. Now, uh, let's add in technology. We grow up in a Facebook, Instagram world. And that means we're good at putting filters on things. Filters that screen out the negative aspects of our lives for others, leaving us with a perception that everyone else's life is amazing, except our own. And that makes some of us depressed. We know um, and instead of turning to our friends or family, we just hunt the next great picture to show everyone else how amazing our own life is. What sounds kind of ridiculous actually leads to our generation being growing up with lower self-esteem than previous generations. So people deal with loneliness nowadays even uh, by sending out 10 text messages to 10 different people saying moin, 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 moin. Because it feels good when you receive this response. And why is that? Why does it feel good? Well, we know that when we receive a text, the same organic chemical that makes us feel good when we smoke, when we drink, or when we gamble is being released. It's called dopamine. It 
That's why we go back several times to check how many, time, how many likes we have received on our content. So, um, why is, why, what does that mean? Why, what's the other problem with dopamine? Dopamine is also highly, highly addictive. And uh, why is that important? Well, apparently, almost every alcoholic discovered alcohol when they were teenagers. When we grow up, the only approval we need comes from our parents. As we hit the high stress phase of adolescence, we for the first time need the approval from our peers. Now, what we're supposed to learn in that phase is to turn to our friends when we are in stress. Now, some people, quite by accident, discover alcohol as the substitute stress coping mechanisms. Unfortunately, this mechanism becomes hardwired in their brain. That means, whenever they experience stress from that point on, they'll turn to the alcohol bottle. Social stress bottle. Career stress bottle. We give our generation unlimited access to a new source for the numbing effects of the highly addictive organic chemical called dopamine. We have age restrictions on smoking, drinking, gambling. We do not have age restrictions on smartphone or social media. That is the equivalent, from, purely from an addiction standpoint, of opening up the alcohol cabinet in the supermarket and talking to our teenagers saying, hey, by the way, this adolescence thing, if it gets you down, there you go. And yeah, it's an entire generation growing up with lower self-esteem. Now let's quickly talk about the concept of impatience. This, this picture that you can see behind me could very well be the picture that the millennial from two uh, slides ago saw in his VR glasses. Um, and the summit of the mountain, that's his abstract idea of an impact that we want to make, right? It's the happiness in life, the impact. What we don't see, what we don't see is the foot of the mountain. We forget that we still have to climb the mountain, right? Why is that? The key word here really is instant gratification right nowadays. You want to watch a movie? Netflix got you covered right away. You want to buy something? Amazon, it arrives the next day. You want to go on a date? Swipe right three times, you got two dates. We don't even have to learn the social skills anymore that our parents had to learn. Like they were standing in front of the mirror. They told me, winking, winking at people and practicing that at home, right? We don't, we just swipe right. So. Why? Um, we can have everything we want in life right away, except job satisfaction, expertise, deep meaningful relationships. They still take time, and we need to learn that. Now, you, you, you take our generation, and you put them in corporate environments, where some of them, many of them, care more about the numbers than about the people. More about the financial quarterly result than about the human lifetime of a young person. So what we need, what we need, because our, some of us uh, were victims to wrong parenting strategies. Some of us don't have the uh, social skills anymore. Some of us don't, um, we, we don't have the stress coping mechanisms anymore. We don't turn to our friends. So what we need is corporate environments that teach us two things. The first one, is we need to find joy again in working for something that cannot be accomplished within months or even years. The joy of working, of climbing the mountain. And the second thing is how to build trustworthy relationships. We want, we want, what, what we want from corporate environment is if you sit in a meeting, everyone is waiting for the meeting to start, we don't want everyone to look on their own smartphone in front of their faces. What we want is conversations like, hey, how is your dad? I heard he was in hospital. Oh, thanks for asking, he's great again. Or, did you ever get that report done? Oh, no, no, I'm really busy at the moment. I, I got some capacity, I can help you out with it. That's how trust forms, and that's where we need the support of our, of our corporate environment. We have our flaws that we need to work on, but we, now we also need the support of the corporate environment. So what happens to our generation, to people who actually do not have um, relief on any of the four challenges that I presented, if the worst case present, uh, happens. Well, what we're seeing is higher dropout rates out of anything due to depression, studies, uh, jobs, anything. 
we are seeing increasing rates of accidental death rates due to drug overdose. And since the introduction of the smartphone, we're seeing constantly rising suicide rates hitting a 32-year high last year. Time for some good news, right? This is uh, from the newspaper last week. Uh, in, it's a German newspaper, this Kopfhoch. It has two meanings. One is heads up and the other one is cheer up. And was an article about our generation and man was I happy that they say the same thing that I'm telling you right now. And what they say is, uh, not social media and smartphones is bad, too much smartphones and social media is bad. It's the imbalance that's the problem. So how can you challenge that for yourself? Well, I read a little bit about it and I would start not using my smartphone the first and the last hour of the day. And the impact is amazing. What happens to you is the first thing that we will notice right away, okay, not right away, impatience, remember, but we're rarely quickly, rarely quickly, um, the sleep quality increases. That means you have more time because you also need less sleep. So what do you do with that? You might increase your nutrition, you know, the quality of your nutrition, and do sports maybe. That increases your quality even further. That would lead for me to the moment where I would wake up after six hours and ask myself, Jasper, why are you awake? Uh, you, you should be still be sleeping, but I was feeling great after six hours and I was one of the people who would always ask themselves, why do I need eight hours of sleep? So that totally changed. And there's so many other benefits of it that I can't go into detail with, including higher self-confidence and calmer mind, talking of think big. These moments where you sit somewhere and you just think about the world, think big, you don't have them anymore. Because you always then, in these moments, check your smartphone. And last but not least, it's also the, the reason why I'm standing here today, because I felt I had the capacity to do something additional next to my job and next to my uh, studies. And the, for the first time in my life, I started that three months ago, I would not procrastinate. The first time in my life that I would not turn things in on the last day. So, wrap up. Uh, what I want you to remember is three things. The first one consists of the four challenges. It is uh, parenting. The second one is technology. Remember, an addiction is a bad thing, right? Uh, people make fun of being smartphone addicted nowadays. It's not funny. An addiction is like all addictions. They cost time, money, and relationships. It's not funny. The third one um, was impatience, and the fourth one is the environment. So, um, this thing. When we fall in love tonight, whenever, and somebody else falls in love with us, we look into each other's eyes and smile a little bit less than 200 times a day. On average, the German looks 208 times on their smartphones per day. Let's not love our smartphones more than we love our partners. And the very last thing. The next time you're having a great time, maybe tonight, or next time you're standing next to one of the wonders of this world, please enjoy the moment and take a picture. Don't take away your moments for pictures in which you appear to live. Thank you. Thank you, Jasper. I like the tip on the one hour of more sleep and one hour before you sleep too again. That's really good. <laughs>